<laughs> Good evening. How's everybody? Blessed, are you blessed and highly flavored? Because you are the salt of the earth. That means you sting. <laughs> I didn't say stink. I said sting. You sting. Yes, yeah, salt stings, doesn't it? Can everybody hear me? Glory. Grab your swords and turn to Psalm 23. I have a message from the Lord. <laughs> I left my camel home. <laughs> Yes, Psalm 23. Is everybody there? And more light that comes in you moves out darkness. And you know what? You begin to change. That's why it's important to sing. There are people who are still living in the outer court, been Christians for 20 and 30 years, are still living in the outer court. They can't press to, they can't handle praising all the way or worshiping all the way. They get distracted too easy because they're outer quarters. Well, we want to get in the court. You can't get in the holy place. The enemy will distract you as much as possible. Why? Because you want to disconnect to connect. You cannot connect without disconnect from yourself. That's every day. That's just not one time. It is a constant life of disconnect to connect. Amen? In verse 1, the Lord is my what? Shepherd. That means he oversees you. You allow him to. You want him to. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not what? Want. Want. That word also represents lack. So if the Lord is your shepherd, you ain't going to lack. It's when he's not your shepherd that you lack. Amen? He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul, my mind, will, emotions, and imaginations. He leads me in the path of what? Righteousness for his name's sake. Yo, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not what? Fear evil. Why? Because he's your shepherd. You know why people fear? Because he's not their shepherd. I will fear no evil, for you are what? With me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with what? Oil, my cup runs over. Why? A table is always prepared before you, before the enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for what? Ever. I shall not want or lack because we dwell in the house of the Lord or what we call in his presence. In his presence, there is no lack. Does everybody got that? There is no want. There's no lack. There's no want. Why? Because he provides far above all you could ever ask or think. So that's why you and I fight for his presence. It's constant. We're always fighting for the presence of the Lord. I'm not going to stop preaching this until I go home. Because it's amazing how many people don't fight for the presence of God. They're so caught up in themselves. Everything's about them. They stop. They stop. They can't press through to that other dimension. Listen, we must break through that realm. There is a veil there that you've got to break through every time. You don't break through. You stay in the outer court. And that's the closest thing to outer darkness. And people wonder why they make stupid decisions. They wonder why they backslide and fall. They wonder why the devil steals everything. Because they're still living in the outer core. Or it's the closest thing to darkness. I'm telling you, there are believers that are believers that I've known for 20, 30, 40 years. And they still haven't hit the holy place yet. Because they're too easily distracted. No focus. 
Psalm 34. Why do you think we dance? In you, you want to dance, but your pride can't keep you. I can't dance. Dear God, what would people think? How about what would God think? It is one of the greatest forms of worship is to dance. In fact, it's a good way to kill yourself. Deny yourself, right? So do a 2K and dance. <laughs> Psalm 34, is everybody there? I will bless the Lord at what? All times his praise shall continually be in my what? Mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be what? Glad. Oh, magnify the Lord, Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Why? Because if I bless the Lord at all times and praises in my mouth, you know what? His presence is with me. And you know what? I'm not going to lack. I'm not even going to want. I'm going to trust. Mm. Oh, let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from what? All of my fears. The spirit of fear can't handle the presence of God. They looked at him and were radiant, and their faces were hot or not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of what? All of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who what? Fear the Lord and delivers them. Why? Because in the presence of God, the fear of the Lord is there. And an angel encamps, you know that that angel encamps around that individual can kill 180,000 people. And you get a legion of them at least. So what's the problem? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Why? Taste his presence. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want. Everyone say no want. No want. To those who fear him. Why? Because in his presence there is no want. The young lions lack, suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Remember the word want is also associated with lack. Bless the Lord, praise the Lord, means so in the spirit. Speak with your breath. Why? Because it says so in the spirit and you'll reap peace in life. By bringing his presence, there again is no want or no lack. Does everybody get it? Why? Because the only thing you want is his presence. And in his presence is fulfillment of everything. Everything. In Psalm 16. Presence. As you praised and worshiped tonight, did you sense God's presence? Did you sense a peace? If you didn't, you didn't break through. Does everybody get it? You have to break through. There's a veil that prevents us and holds us back. You got to pop it, bust it. Holy Ghost, karate. You got to kick it through. You need to throw that phone out. Hallelujah. Glory, Psalm 16, verse 11. Let's speak it. You what? You will what? Show me the path of life. How are you going to get the path of life? He tells you. In your presence is fullness of joy. So in his presence. He's going to show you his path of life. He's going to establish your thoughts and your steps. And in his presence is fullness of joy. I'm joyful all the time. I don't care. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and in his presence is fullness of joy. Now look at the next thing. Are you ready? At his right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. Pleasures forevermore. Are those in his pre from his presence? Yes. That's why we fight for his presence. He's going to show us the path of life that pleases him. 
Living in his presence and acknowledging or embracing his presence brings revelations. In other words, he's always going to release things to us. So we will not want or lack. He's going to make every area, because we're blessed are we spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. We are joint heirs of Christ. We can't even comprehend that sometimes, that you're a joint heir of Christ. But it can only come through by God's presence. When you get in that presence, everything becomes a reality. No longer is it outer. No longer is it worldly. No longer is there misunderstanding. No longer is there confusion. There's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in that presence. And he doesn't even have to say a word. It's already understood. Oh, praise God. Matthew 6. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That word want means uh, not lack, but it also associates with another word. It's called desire. Everyone say desire. Because when you want something, do you desire it? Amen. In verse 31, Matthew 6, verse 31. What does it say? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Or where shall we go? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But what? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now first seek the kingdom of God means first seek his presence. Because his righteousness is released in his presence. And then what? All things will be added to you. Why? Because... The pleasures, his good pleasures are released to you. He's going to make a way where it seems to be no way. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not desire. Amen? Seek, go after, press through the veil of separation, and enter his presence of righteousness, and you will not want or lack. Psalm 37. Psalm 37, starting at verse 1. Do not what? Fret because of evil doers, nor be envious of workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Well, you can't feed on his faithfulness unless you're in his presence. Delight. That word delight means desire. Amen? Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart, Because, but in his presence there is a heart exchange. Is everybody with me? So when you press through and get into that presence of the Lord, there's a heart exchange where your heart is exchanged for his heart. Now you got his desires for you. Does everybody understand this? It cannot happen in the outer court. It doesn't happen there. It can only happen in a holy place and most holy place. That's where the exchange is made. That's where a heart exchange is made. And that's where his desires for you are released. Now you know what he wants. You know that he wants to bless you. Does everybody understand this? This is important. Because too many people are not getting into that place. They're still stuck in the outer court. Then they wander around. They walk in confusion, don't knowing what God's want, this, that, whatever. Oh, Hallelujah. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also, and he, and he will what? Bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently him, for him, and don't fret because of him who what? Prospers. Okay. 
Does God want you to prosper? Yes. Yes, he does. Very much. But do not fret because of him who prospers in his way or evil way, but because of a man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, and do not fret. It only causes harm. Don't look at others and become jealous or envious. Amen? Trust in the Lord. Dwell in his presence and exchange your heart for his to manifest his desires for you because he came to bring you and I life and life abundantly and prosperity spiritually, physically, and financially. He did. He wants you to have the cake and eat it too. I remember he told me that one day. I said, Lord, what about this? He said, guy, you can have the cake and eat it too. I said, praise God. Send me to the bakery. Genesis 3. Genesis 3. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not desire. Is everybody there? In verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said, and he what? That means he spoke. That means he has a voice. He spoke to the woman. Hmm. And what did he say? Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Oh, he put a question of doubt to her. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the tree fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said you shall not eat it nor shall you touch it lest you die boy she told him what God said but it was too late because he already planted a desire in her and the serpent said to the woman you shall not surely die called God a liar for God knows in a day that you shall you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you shall be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, she already was like God. She was the offspring of God. Does everybody get it? Not that she was God, but God was training her up. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for what? Food. Hmm. It was good for food. Did she desire, anybody ever desire food? Okay, so we see there that he's called the voice of desire. It was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes. Wanting something. And a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband, and then their eyes were both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. The serpent drew Eve from the presence of God by his voice, bringing her into his presence and releasing the desire to be like God. When she already was his offspring, exchanging the desires of the Lord for the desires of self-indulgence, lust of sight. Is everybody with me? Food desires to taste and wisdom to make pride. Promoting pride. In other words, from that point on, this released a voice of desire. Does everybody got that? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not desire. I shall not want. Now the voice of desire. You're, the battle for me and you is over the voice of desire. I mean, we, our battle is a voice. They are voices. The voice of desire. It's a false desire, isn't it? Amen. It's a desire that wants to promote sin. It's a desire that wants to promote self. It's a voice to bring distraction in your life and my life. Hallelujah. Now we have entered the battle of voices that promote desires that don't please God and desires that please God. 
It depends on which presence you dwell in more. Mm. James 4. Why? Because what you speak is what you eat. What you sow is what you reap. What presence you're in more is what you become more. That's why you got to be careful of associations. Associations bring impartations. Amen? In verse 1, let's speak it. Is everybody there? James 4, 1. Where do what? Wars and fights come from among you. Do they not come for your, um, your, from your where? Desires. That voice of want. For pleasure. That war in your members. You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. And when you ask, you don't receive. Because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your self. Your pleasures. Sinful pleasures. Selfish pleasures. Well, then he confirms it. Adulterers and adulterers. And adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? So he says, man, you're acting just like a heathen. Your desires are the same as the world. Whoever be, therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. What's he looking at? He's looking at our desires, the fruit of our desires. Or do you think the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in you yearns jealously. So there is a battle in me and you, isn't there? But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will what? Flee from you. The voice of desire that comes from beneath wants, <laughs> wants to fulfill selfish desires. And they can't, <laughs> man, this is where an individual becomes more materialistic. Has everybody got it? It's materialism. They become, in, they, 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 they can't get enough of the material world because they become slaves to it, through the desire. The voice of desire from above is the desire to see God. Your desire, when it comes from God, when that heart is exchanged, you want to see him. That is your first desire. Lord, I want to see you and I want to know you. Amen? Hmm. So see God, you want to please him. But the old man of desire will battle for first place. Is everybody with me? The old man, your old man, remember you were born again, but that old man is still there. He's going to battle for first place for desire. Within you. That voice will battle for first place. And the only way to separate and quiet down that voice is to be filled with the Spirit of God, which will help distance you from that voice. And by using the words of God to replace that voice. So we can fill with the presence of God to bring distance, and then we use the word of God to replace that voice. Think about this for a second. Every label, everything is labeled, doesn't it? Everything has a name. You're on a couch, you're on a chair, I'm on a podium, this is a Bible. Everything has a label. Every label has a voice. Because every label is a name. And every name has a voice. Everything speaks to me and you in one way or another. And when you walk by that donut, yo, eat me. And all of a sudden, you can taste it. You start drooling in your mouth. Your saliva starts running. <laughs> you got to run away. <laughs> Either that, you grab it and devour it. And, you know, then the guilt comes. And <laughs> Oh, man, why'd I do that? Romans 7. So every label has a name. And it's a voice of action for our desire. Somebody mentions the car. Oh, yeah, I know that one. Amen? Whatever it is, a restaurant, yeah, there, there's a desire that's always, everything releases a desire. 
Everything has a voice. Romans 7. Oh, glory. In verse 7. The voice of desire. Let's speak it. What shall we say then? Is the, is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except for through the law. For I would have not known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not covet. <laughs> but sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of what? Evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. In other words, until the law, Ten Commandments came, they didn't know that they were doing something wrong. It was through conscience that God was trying to bring conviction. But their conscience was seared. Hard-hearted. He said, I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. <laughs> and the commandment which was to bring life, I found to bring death. Why? Because it was exposing sin. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it killed me. Therefore the law is holy, the commandment holy, just and good. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I was carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Now sin that dwells in you is called the old man. That old dude's sin. He was born in sin. For I know that in me that is in my flesh, that's what we call now the old man, Nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find in a law that evil is present with me. Everyone say, evil is present with me. The one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. That is your soul, your will, your emotions, your imaginations, and also here represents your spirit. And bringing me into captivity to the law which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind... I myself serve the law of God. And he says, I will put my law in your minds. But with the flesh, the law of sin. So he's talking about the new man and the old man. Is everybody with me? The voice of evil desires in the old man of flesh was exposed by the law of God. The law exposed it. But by the Spirit, we overpower it. Has everybody got it? The law exposed it, but only through the Spirit of God can you overpower it. Oh, help us. <laughs> Glory. And what are you overcoming? The voice of desire. Because everything, walking through the world, everything's speaking to you. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Is everybody okay? So only through the presence of God are you going to be able to recognize this. 
The more the presence of God is on you, the more you are filled with the Spirit, the more you will recognize it. And there's something important that I want to share before we continue. The voice of desire has a motive. And the purpose of the motive is to manipulate somehow. There is a motive behind it. It can be a good motive from God, or it can be an evil motive from the enemy. So there's always a motive, a desire, and that desire is looking for something else, a fulfillment of a feeling. So you have a motive, a desire, and a fulfillment of a feeling. Is everybody with me? Now that motive can be pure, or it can be evil. And when they, that's why you and I must always look at the motive of the desire. Why do I desire this, and what is the motive? And then you will be able to see what the purpose of that desire is to release. What's the emotion? What's the feeling? See, now, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In other words, I shall not lack or I shall not desire because by having God's presence in my life, I won't be desiring the wrong thing. I'll be desiring the right thing. I'll be listening from the voice of the shepherd that releases the correct desire that pleases God. Because, but if I'm not being led by the Spirit of God, I'm not going to be following, I'm going to be following the wrong voice. And it's going to bring trouble. It's going to bring distance. It'll bring separation. And you'll be desiring other things that you shouldn't desire. Amen? Galatians chapter 2 and verse 19. Oh, hallelujah. The voice of desire. Now there's the voice of false desire and there's a the voice of true desire. <laughs> Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. For though, uh, for I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been what? crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the natural, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. In other words, I have been crucified with Christ. That is my flesh of the old man and evil desires promoted by the voice of false desires. That caused sin and separation from God. It caused a person to never leave the outer court. They can never leave the outer court because the voice of desire, that false desire, is keeping them separated from going any deeper or going any further. They're always distracted by this desire of everything. Galatians 5. <laughs> ah. Ah, that was good. Galatians 5.16. So we want to recognize desire, but when that desire is recognized, we want to recognize or expose the motive. That motive must be exposed or that desire will continue. And you, next thing you thought, well, man, I thought it was a good thing. But the motive wasn't exposed. In verse 16, what does it say? I say, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Hello. Or you shall not fulfill the voice of desire or false desire. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh, or these are the works of the voice of desire. 
Amen? But it's a false desire. And what is the works of the false desire, voice of the false desire? He says, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which also means drugs. How many of y'all know drugs got a voice? Very big one. Cigarettes have a voice. Alcohol has a voice. Anything with a name has a voice. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, and revelries, and the like, of which I've told you before, and just as also I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So what's the enemy trying to do? Distract us from sowing in the spirit and doing the right thing so an entrance will be supplied for me and you. Remember, God wants us to prosper. He wants us to be blessed. But some people have prospered with the voice of evil desires. That's why he said, don't be envious of them. Don't be jealous of them. That's the reward. But you have a reward waiting for you at home and here. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there's no law. And those who are what? Christ, those who are filled with the Spirit and the anointing, have crucified the flesh with its what? Passions and what? Desires. He's talking about evil passions and evil desires. Does everybody get it? Because that's what the flesh produces of the old man. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And let us, be, let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Those that break through the veil of separation into the presence of God and get filled with the Spirit are Christ and have crucified the flesh with sinful passions and desires. But you must break through the veil. Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Accursed items have a voice. Paraphernalia. And I remember trying to quit using dope, but I never threw away the paraphernalia. Man, that thing spoke to me all stinking day long. Then I went and fulfilled it. And it brought nothing but pain and sorrow. Until you finally throw the paraphernalia out or those accursed items. And God says, make no place for the devil. What's he talking about? That desire. You know, and how many times did you not want to throw out something and you knew it wasn't right? But it had a voice representing someone or something or some event because that voice of desire was bringing a an emotional thing. Oh, but that was my mother's dragon. <laughs> or whatever it was. You know what I'm saying? Believe me, I had 24 carat plates that were dragons. And, and they were worth money, man. I brought them outside and went pang, pang, pang. You know, people's Buddhas and all these other things. These are cursed items. Clothes, whatever it is. They got a voice. They're representing uh, and trying to get... You don't... And if you're not looking at or checking out the motive behind this thing, you're going to fall into its desire and it's going to... Because it's always promoting a feeling of an event or someone or something. Emotional attachment. And the enemy's going to access and steal, kill, and destroy what God would bless you with, the devil will steal. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Galatians where? Oh, Ephesians 2. Thank you. <laughs> pet dragon, you know. <laughs> Man, I got to kill that pet dragon. All right. Verse 1. Let's speak it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of error, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, promoting a what? 
a voice of desire, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the what? Desires of the flesh and of the mind of the thoughts, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were idiots and dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ by grace you've been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show his exceeding riches, his grace, and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Hmm. Powerful. Lust and desires of the flesh, sin, and wrath, all before we were born again. Amen? Until we were born of the Spirit and conversion of the soul. So that soul must be, reach a level of conversion. And it can't be done in the outer court. It's done out of the outer court. Colossians 3. Colossians chapter 3. How many all sickness has a voice? Oh, hallelujah. In verse 5, let's speak it. Therefore put to what? Death, your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil, desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. He calls them sons of disobedience. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to what? Put off these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the New man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put to death the voice of false desires, that voice of um, emotion to feel, that voice to desire or to want. It is a voice of false desire. We must be careful and recognize it and check the motives behind everything. Psalm 150. What is the motive behind it? Is it going to please God or displease God? It's real simple. Is it going to promote a lie? Is it going to promote sin? Or is it going to promote righteousness? What is it going to promote? Will it please God or displease God? That's why the Lord says, acknowledge me in all of your ways. And I'll establish your steps. Commit to me your works. And I'll establish your thoughts. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments. And flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Everything that has a voice, praise the Lord. Okay. Does the label have a voice? Yes. Somebody got it. How does it have a voice? Because it has a name and it represents something. 
Luke 19. Luke 19. In verse 40, Luke 19 and verse 40. What does he say? But he answered and said to them, I tell you that, the, that if these should keep silent, these men, the stones would what? Immediately what? Cry out. You know, stone has a voice too. One is called hurt, the other is called hard. If you ever get hit with one, it hurts. <laughs> if you fall on it, you realize it's hard. <laughs> Everything has a voice. Isaiah 55, we'll close here. It's amazing, you know, if you ever do, do something, you know, like, Shut your finger on the door, you know, you know, after you, whatever, recover from it. But a st oh, that stupid door, you know. I mean, you actually have a communication with this thing because it released something because it has a label. Did you ever talk to your car? Don't lie. Come on, start, baby. <laughs> And then when it dies, oh! I don't want to tell you those things. Isaiah 55. You realize how many things you talk to? Why? Because everything that has a name, has a label, has a voice. You're talking, and it's saying something. You see a couch? Oh, you got to be careful now. Some of these things, sit down. Relax. Don't move. Aren't you comfortable? Then it goes to, now you're tired. See, you didn't check the motive of that couch, did you? <laughs> Oh, no, you're not doing that to me. Isaiah 55, is everybody there? In verse 1. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine, milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Here in your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, says the Lord. The sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people. A leader and a commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know. And nations who do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God. And the Holy One of Israel for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be fine, found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and let him have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord, nor are your ways my ways. For as for the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down in the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and, bring it, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the either, eater, so shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, 
It shall accomplish what I please, and it shall what? Prosper in the thing that I sent for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall what? Break forth in singing before you. Do you ever go to a beautiful place with mountains? I mean, there's like a song. It's like they're singing. Do you ever see the trees wave? They got a hand wave in their eyes. Hey, Lord. You know. <laughs> they shall break forth in singing before you. And all of the trees of the field shall what? Clap their hands. Man, they're praising God. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Mountains, hills sing. They sway. It's a voice of desire. Without the presence of the Lord and the word of God, you will not recognize the voice of false desire. You must press through that veil. Amen? Don't give up. Did you ever pick up your Bible and all of a sudden you felt tired? That voice of desire will come. And he's trying to promote. And his motive is to prevent you from getting truth or reviving. Always trying to interrupt or distract. That's his job and he does it well. That's why many people do not accomplish or fulfill the mission that God has sent them on. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. Help us to recognize and expose the voice of desire that we may expose the motive behind it and see its fulfillment of feeling. Lord, we want to make sure that our desires are your desires and that your desires are our desires. So help us to press through into the presence so that there is a heart exchange so that the desires of the Lord will be manifested in our life. And Lord, if there's anyone in this room today that's first desire is not to see you, to know you, and to please you, let that become first in their lives today from this day forward in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>